Welcome back, Morgan enthusiasts, for another Morgan Dollar Mondays with Massabesic Gold and Silver. This week we have part two of our two-part series of what is in the display here at Massabesic Gold and Silver. I am Dean with Massabesic Gold and Silver. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. Out of all the channels on YouTube, you decided to check out my content, and I thank you for that, and I hope you like and subscribe and do all the things, especially comment. So our first coin here, uh, this is usually not on screen too too much but this is a nice 1901 new orleans morgan silver dollar i picked this up a number of years ago this was in an old annex holder not the soapbox holders but the uh, blue label holders and the grade was uh, mint state 65 and i really don't think they're that far off this is a really nice example um, it is a flatter strike but that is uh, pretty typical of new orleans mint morgans um, but there's some fascinating stuff here in the reverse that I'll show you that I find interesting um, that I do want to uh, show you, point out, and maybe do a little research later on for myself. So we have the O mint mark there for New Orleans. We have a nice looking eagle, but across the throat of the eagle, I'm going to try to get a little closer here so you can see it. You can see here that there is a impure metal streak right there, that dark kind of part of the metal there going right across the eagle's neck. Um, pretty common on some Morgans. Um, this one here obviously has a good example of it. It also has some doubling here in the uh, uh, in God We Trust right here. We could see some some interesting stuff going on there. So I got to look that up to see if that's a VAM. I'm not really sure if it is or not. So that's something I want to do a little bit more research on. It does seem to be some sort of uh, doubling or something there. Uh, but it is a nice coin overall. Someday I might send it off again to get graded. Um, I think it would come back a nice gem, maybe a mint state 64, but I think it's got that, uh, got that look, um, for a gem coin. Let's see. Our next one here, uh, is an 1889 Philadelphia. This one I bought raw. Uh, it's a nice coin overall. It has some interesting metal flow lines on the coin itself in the field. I'll show you that in a second here um, when we get a little closer. But overall, I think it's a nice, nice graded coin or a nice coin to be graded if I should send it off. Um, I think it would probably come in in that uh, nice mid state 64. That's just a guess. Feel free to disagree or agree. Um, but I, you know, it's it's relatively free of marks uh, overall. Has some nice luster. The reverse here is quite nice as well. Very little little uh, contact marks. Um, you know, I don't know if it's quite that gem, but it uh, it definitely is nice. You can see kind of some. I don't know if it's breaks and luster or not, but um, there is also some here. All these little points that I'm pointing out is uh, die clash marks, which is kind of cool. Um, so it's pretty neat that uh, that it has those die clash marks on the reverse. Um, also on the uh, obverse, you can get a really good look here at the kind of ripples in the metal, how the, uh, how the flow lines, the metal flow lines kind of look here. It's kind of interesting, um, to see, at least to me, it's interesting. Not everybody's going to see that as being interesting, but you can kind of see how there's like almost ripples in the uh, fields from how, uh, the, the coin was struck. Uh, next up here is this really nice example of an 1890 Philadelphia. Um, this one, um, a little bit lower mint state grade, probably uh, in that 62. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty beat up here. You can see a lot of marks. You know, these aren't exactly superficial. There's some pretty big har uh, marks there. A little carbon spot up there in the Liberty. Um, and then there's some places here along the rim that uh, it's a little chewed up. Like right here, you can see it's a little chewed up there. Um, you know, if this was to get graded, it, it might even come back as a details coin because there is so much damage along the rim. Um, you know, I don't know if that's just regular old bag marks from being in a bag for so many years or if it actually is, uh, you know, legit damage. Um, overall, it's just a nice mid-state coin. Nothing spectacular for uh, 1890 Philadelphia, but I like it. I bought it raw way back when, um, and I've just held on to it ever since. Next up is this 1880S. I've shown this one before. This is absolutely stunning on the obverse. Um, very, very little marks here. You know, if uh, if I was to grade this coin just on the obverse, I would say we're looking at a coin that's mint state 65 to mint state 66. 
Um, there's just really nothing there. It's just gorgeous. Of course, it's a San Francisco, so the luster's fantastic. But on the reverse, unfortunately, we get a lot of contact marks. You know, you can just see here it was coin after coin after coin dropping onto this one coin. Um, all those marks there between the eagle's wings and the wreath. Uh, it's really a shame. I don't really know what this would co go down to, to grade as. I, I do plan on sending this off at some point to get graded just to see if it would come back a mid-state 64 or maybe even a mid-state 65. I, I just don't think it could with all those marks there. But as I said, really, really a beautiful coin, especially from the obverse um, as it stands. The next one here, everybody knows if you've been watching the channel for a little bit, this is that 85 Philadelphia that I bought um, and I cracked it out of a PCI holder. This, uh, we all kind of agreed, is artificial toning because of the substance that's uh, on the obverse of the coin. Um, some people argue that this is not a mint state coin, that this is a AU coin. I don't necessarily see it being an AU, but it's tough to say because... When you get into those Mint State 60 coins to those uh, AU58, you know, the difference is, is really hard to, to see. And, and with all this toning on the obverse, it kind of makes it a little bit harder. But there are a lot of marks on this. I'd say it's a low Mint State coin myself. Uh, next up is this 1892 New Orleans. This is one of my favorite coins. I picked this up raw, obviously. Um, and it's just got beautiful, beautiful patina here. Um it's just a great coin. Uh, in higher grades, the 1892-0 is a little harder to come by um, compared to a lot of Morgans. Um, not compared to some of the uh, 1890s Morgans. A lot of 1890s Morgans are actually really hard to find. Um, but this one here, you know, you can find it in uh, grades like this. Fairly common. The next one here is a 1897 Philadelphia. This one I really like just that kind of uh, little golden toning along the rim. Uh, it just looks really nice. Um, you know, I think this coin would grade in that mint state 63 to mint state 64. Um, that's just me. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if people would agree with that or not, but that's that's my grading. Uh, but I bought this coin uh, because of this. A uh, huge impure metal streak. I really wanted a nice example, and you can see that large impure metal streak right there. Um, you know, I talked about this in other videos, and maybe I'll do another video on these um, just to kind of update that last video I did. But this is a this is actually fairly common with Morgans. You can find these. Um, Bowers in his book usually when he s talks about these he he steers collectors away from them because they can be quite ugly. I'm fascinated by it because you know I'm a big nerd and I think it's kind of cool um, and to kind of get get a glimpse into the minting process. Our next one here is kind of a boring coin. This is a 1903 Philadelphia. Um, this coin um, you know I kind of got duped on by the pictures on eBay. Um, this one I kind of learned my lesson. You can see all those marks on the cheek. Well, the seller did a good job of covering up all those marks um, as they took pictures. So I got duped. Um, but it is it is a nice example overall. It is relatively flat, like it's a weekly struck coin. But the luster on the reverse is quite nice. The luster on the obverse is okay. Um, but I don't know if I would have picked this up um, with as many of those marks there. This just looks, yeah, it looks more like damage too than it actually does contact marks, but I'll leave that all up to you all to discuss in the comments. Here's another 1903P. Um, this Philadelphia I purchased, this was in an annex holder, also a blue label holder, also a mid-state 65. Uh, I really liked the toning. I know this type of toning is not for everybody. I like it, but you can see how nice the luster is under all this toning. The reverse I really like too, uh, a lot of different colors. You know, it does have some of that kind of brownish, kind of tarnish-like or tarnish-like looking toning. Um, you know, obviously toning and tarnish is the same thing, but when I say tarnish, I kind of mean brown. Um, while at the bottom here, you can see a lot of greens, a lot of blues. Um, it's just really, really nice. Again, I know toning is not for everybody, but I enjoy toning. And when I saw this coin, I picked it up actually relatively cheap, especially considering that Annex called this a gem coin. I think that they are pretty close there if they're not right on. Our next one here is another coin, 1904 New Orleans, or I should say another um, New Orleans. I don't really know why, but anyway. Um, I got this coin because I really like the die cracks on it. I got this relatively cheap. Um, close to silver melt value actually um, at the time 
Um, I like the die cracks. I would never send this coin in to get graded. It is mint state. I suspect it has been dipped a few times. Um, you know, it just has some weird kind of toning here and there. Uh, it has quite the mark there on the cheek too. Um, our next one here is a 1921D, and I know this coin's been dipped because this is a coin that I dipped for the channel. This coin uh, came out of a large coin collection that I went through last year. It was completely covered with a brown uh, toning, uh, not exactly eye appealing. So um, some people thought it was an old cleaning. So um, I decided to dip it just to take a look. And I think they're right. I think there's a couple marks in the front of this coin. If you go back and watch that video, there seems to be some cleaning marks. The reverse, I think, is absolutely gorgeous. This is from the Denver Mint. Um, I can't remember if I said that or not, but this is a 21D. Um, and it's just a nice coin to have in the display. Again, I would never send that off to get graded, but it's nice. Last but not least is not a Morgan dollar. This is a 1926 Philadelphia piece dollar. See, I do like other dollars than Morgan's. Um, this is just one of my favorites. So this one I did buy raw and I really wonder if it is a 63 or maybe even a 64. I might be, I might be pushing it with a 64. Um, but I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. I think the, the luster is just wonderful, uh, especially on the reverse here. Like I could just look at this coin all day. Um, and I'm not even a huge fan of peace dollars, but I will say this just has some really wonderful luster. This is a common date, um, a common date peace dollar, I should say. Um, but, uh, I don't know, maybe that'll go off to get graded someday. Anyway, everybody, I thank you for checking out my channel today. I hope you enjoyed uh, checking out these raw Morgans and the Peace Dollar here. And, of course, I hope that you keep coming back each week, checking out my content, commenting on videos. I love reading comments. I love responding to the comments, so please do that. I also love the emails, too, so keep those coming as well. Well, everybody, I thank you again. And until we meet again, stay safe and continue to enjoy.